So you remember the propaganda about the Bin Laden raid? Navy SEAL Team 6 goes in there, and they did. And they saw the white of his eyes, and he went for a gun, and he shielded himself with women. But they shot him anyway, and they didn't shoot any of the women. We got them all what the bravery it said. Now look, I said at the time, you can go back and watch the old tapes. I said, that's nonsense. Now these guys were plenty brave enough, Navy SEAL Team 6, dropping into the middle of Pakistan to do this raid. You don't have to embellish it. Bin Laden didn't hide behind women. What are you doing in some B-rate Hollywood movie? That didn't happen. He didn't just oh, happen to reach for the gun and just at the right time. And I said, look, there's an excellent chance that he didn't even reach for a gun at all. Because they didn't want to take him alive. They, they wanted to make sure, because then it'd be a pain in the ass. Are you going to do a trial? Are you going to do one in the U.S.? Are you going to do one in Guantanamo Bay? What kind of rights are you going to give him? There was a wink and a nod. Hey, make sure that as you're getting him, if there's any kind of threat, make sure you neutralize that threat. In fact, the guy who's writing this book about the raid now, who was part of the Navy SEAL team, uh, says that they had a meeting about that. I'll tell you about it in a second. Now, he's using a pseudonym, Michael Owen. Um, I'm sorry, Mark Owen. Uh, but the reality is Fox News has already outed him. I just don't want his name out there more than Fox News has already put it out there. I thought they were really concerned about leaks, but uh, they threw his name out there. The book is called No Easy Day. So let me tell you a little bit about it. Here's what Owen says, quote, The raid was being reported like a bad action movie. At first, it was funny because it was so wrong. So, now here are the parts that they got wrong. There was no 40-minute firefight outside of the compound. He's like, that's not true. We had no firefight outside of the compound. Uh, he said that uh, when they went to get bin Laden, uh, this is the most relevant part, interesting part, they didn't even shoot him in the beginning. They said they saw a man, runs upstairs, and then they hear a couple of gunshots. They go upstairs, they don't rush into the room, they take their time because they want to be safe. That's smart. That's the right way to do it. By the time they get into the room, Bin Laden is already shot, and there are a couple of women wailing over him, not protecting him, but they're wailing because he's about to die, right? So then they're told, like, hey, if you can get him alive, go ahead. But they don't. They put a couple of bullets in him anyway. They fire a couple more. In fact, here, let me quote him on that. We were less than five steps from getting into the top when I heard the suppressed shots. Uh, bop, bop. I couldn't tell him from my position if the rounds hit the target or not. The man disappeared into the dark room. Then he said uh, team members uh, took their time getting in there. And he said blood and brain spilled out of the side of his skull. And this is when they first came into the room. But he was still twitching and convulsing trained our lasers on his chest and fired several rounds. The bullets tore into him, slamming his body into the floor until he was motionless. So that's really interesting. Now, what were their orders? He explains in the book. A lawyer from either the Pentagon or the White House made it clear that this wasn't an assassination. But then he added, quote, I am not going to tell you how to do your job. What we're saying is, if he does not pose a threat, you will detain him. That's your wink and a nod, like, I'm not telling you how to do your job. If you feel you got to, you know, kill the guy, go ahead and do it. Now, it's an amazing admission here that they didn't need to kill the guy at all, and they assassinated him anyway. Now, there's not going to be a lot of tears shed for Osama bin Laden. I just would have liked more information out of him. If we got him alive, we might have been able to get valuable intelligence out of him. And I would have liked to bring him to justice and say, hey, you know what? You were, obviously, were the... I don't like calling him a mastermind, but the leader behind killing nearly 3,000 Americans. We're going to bring you to justice, we're going to try you, and then if we want to do an execution based on convicting him, that would have been terrific. That would have been American justice at work. Now, they decided not to go in that direction, and I'm not blaming the SEALs on that. Now, look, I got some disagreements with, with what I'm about to tell you that they said, but on that count, look, they're basically responding to the subtle messages that they got from the administration who didn't want to deal with the headache of a trial. It's not the right way to go. Uh, but, you know, in the end, of course, we're all happy that they got bin Laden. Uh, but when you hear the actual details, it becomes a little bit more complicated. Now, uh, they say that they were sure that it was bin Laden because they checked his face repeatedly and they had one of the young girls who was over his body confirm that it was bin Laden. Now, again, I wish they hadn't thrown him into the bottom of the ocean. We'd brought him back, made absolutely sure being worried about the logistics, oh my God, what are the Republicans going to say about where to put the body and where to try him, etc. 
you know, after all this courage in getting him, it's needless weakness. We're Americans. We take him, and if we want to bury him somewhere, we'll bury him somewhere. Okay? I mean, it, under that rationale, oh my God, they hit the Twin Towers, we shouldn't build anything there. No! They hit the Twin Towers, and we're going to build a Freedom Tower there. So I don't like that way of thinking. But again, it's not on the SEAL team. Uh, they said that eventually they did discover an AK-47 and a Makarov pistol uh, somewhere in their room, but that oh, oh, Bin Laden had not used it at all. In fact, quote, he hadn't even prepared a defense. He had no intention of fighting. <laughs> this is interesting. Later on, he says, the higher up the food chain the targeted individual was, the bigger pussy he was. So oh, he explains, look, at the lower levels, they tell these guys, put on suicide vests, blow people up, blow yourself up, etc. But whenever you get to fight the higher level guys, they got no interest in any kind of fighting. So that's a fascinating uh, fact. And then finally, uh, when it gets to uh, President Obama, well, a lot of these guys apparently are not fans of the president. They generally apparently happen to be Republicans. Uh, that's certainly the, the sense they leave you with. Now, this particular SEAL was also on the team that freed Captain Richard Phillips from the pirates off the coast of Somalia. And they thought Obama took credit for that and that he would take credit for this too. Here's a quote from the book. And we'll get Obama re-elected for sure. I can see him now talking about how he killed Bin Laden. Now look, the reality is that this is part of politics. Bush bragged about every single thing in the world about terrorism, real or fake. I mean, they'd get the 18th guy in Al-Qaeda and they'd be like, Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, we got this guy you never heard of before. Aren't we awesome? So is the president going to brag that he took the risk to do this mission and it worked well? Of course! That's how politics works. And did Obama do that? Absolutely, he did. Now, uh, he continues, None of us were huge fans of Obama. We respected him as the commander-in-chief of the military and for giving us the green light on the mission. Well, we thought, would you rather not have done this? So basically saying, look, we were going to do our job and we love this job and we were proud that we got bin Laden. We knew Obama was going to take some of the credit for it, and it might help to get re him reelected, but that's just the facts of life, right? Uh, and uh, the last thing I have to say about that is it's amazing how these guys wind up being Republicans. But the Republican Party didn't use Navy SEAL Team 6 it, it, nearly as much as Obama did. When we had Bin Laden cornered in Tora Bora, and we had 5,000 troops ready to go in after him, a general asked permission of Rumsfeld. Rumsfeld said no. Cheney said no. Bush said no. Do not go after Bin Laden. So why are you in favor of the Republicans? If you're a tough guy who's part of this team, you should want nothing to do with the Republicans. I'm not even talking about fake bragging about military prowess. Cheney and Bush didn't go anywhere near Vietnam. You're worried the Democrats are going to take credit for this? You're crazy? The Republicans landed on a damn aircraft carrier with a giant mission accomplished sign after a couple of months in Iraq. We wound up staying in Iraq for 10 long years. It's amazing, the rationale, which is that if you start stupid-ass wars that aren't needed at all, well, then you're a tough guy, and all the Navy SEAL guys are going to be on your side, even if you don't use them for missions that actually work. But if you're a smart president who doesn't start a senseless war, instead uses a, the best-trained guys we have to get our top target, well, I can't believe he's taking credit. Look, you guys deserve all the credit in the world for killing bin Laden and having the courage to execute that mission. And the guys who ordered the mission get credit. And by the way, the guys in the middle probably should get the most amount of credit. The ones that collected the intelligence to be able to get that mission done in the first place. Those are the guys that are almost never mentioned. All right. Now, finally, they said about Biden, he seemed like a drunk uncle that you would have when they went to go to the White House. Now you're like, yeah, he's not sure he's making sense, but he seemed like a likable guy. And apparently, they invited those guys back to the White House for a beer they said during that event, and then never actually followed up. And they were bitter that they didn't get the beers. <laughs> so it's an interesting insight into the Navy SEAL team.